Welcome to the party, pal. Your friendly neighborhood master chaos back with you once again. This time for part three of my deep dive into the Shaw Scope box set here from Arrow Video. Look how shiny that is. Ooh. Normally, I go in disc order in, in, in terms of how it's curated in the box set. So disc three uh, is up next. However, it only has one movie, and I want to do two movies per episode. So we're going to do disc three and disc five because they both have individual movies today we're talking chinatown kids and really fucked up king kong ripoffs back from the dead This is a big goddamn box. I mean, this is just an unruly giant box of a thing. I don't even know how people are storing it. I'm storing it like this. It's kind of sticking out, but I assume when we get volume two, it'll be similar and there'll be some cohesion. If they don't uh, have the same look, uh, then it's gonna be very strange um, for them to choose that. And they have to stick with this new design um, or else it's just gonna look like garbage. Okay, uh, this is a small nitpick. I was thinking about that. It's just too, it's too big. It's too big. Look at this thing. Today, uh, let's start off with disc three. And this is Mighty Peking Man. Wow. Now, some of you might know this. The first time, um, or be familiar with the movie, I should say. The first time I was made aware of this movie was through Quentin Tarantino's Rolling Thunder line. He put the film out. I remember renting this at Blockbuster and wondering why the hell... Tarantino would put this out, but he did. And uh, so I was familiar with Peking Man. When I realized it was included in this set, I was very confused. First of all, I didn't realize that it was a Shaw Brothers movie. If I knew it, I forgot it. Um, and uh, while it is part of Shaw, you know, the Shaw Studios line, it, it feels very out of place with the rest of the movies here. So I, I'm, I'm curious as to the, its inclusion. But I am very grateful for the change of pace. Mighty P. King Man runs one hour and 29 minutes. And let's not kid ourselves, this is a King Kong ripoff. Badass hunter, or so we're told, Johnny Fang, is hired to capture the Mighty P. King Man. Now, there is a lot of extremely goofy, eye-rolling stuff in this. But if you can accept it, there's also quite a bit of fun to be had with this blatant cash grab. This doesn't feel like the typical Shaw Brothers stuff. And not just because it's lacking Kung Fu. It really feels more like those uh, Jungle Expedition movies from the 50s, and honestly, it's a nice change of pace for me. I'm a little burnt out from watching sweaty guys punching and kicking each other. The movie comes complete with a sexy jungle girl who has a rockin' bod and a tragic backstory to match. After her parents died in a plane crash, she was raised by the Peking Man somehow, and now they're bonded like father and daughter. During his trek to find the mighty Peking Man, Johnny Fang meets our jungle girl, and yes, they fall in love, and oh boy, do we get an eye-rolling, cringy, falling-in-love montage with an equally cringy, loungy love song? After they're done making it, Johnny convinces the jungle girl to let him take Utam back to the city. Now, Utam is uh, the mighty Peking man's name. At least that's what she calls him. Of course, taking him to the city is a bad idea, and the last 20 minutes of this movie is exactly what you would expect it to be. A giant monkey climbs a building, and Tonka trucks try to take him out. Follow that up with a pretty bleak ending, and you have a very unique kaiju movie that's not necessarily the best, but not the worst either. Mighty Peking Man isn't great. Uh, it's honestly not even good, but it's enjoyable. There's a lot of fun to be had with this movie. And honestly, sometimes that's all we can ask for. It is almost exactly King Kong down to the letter made shittier, but it's not the worst <laughs> King Kong ripoff. So in the context of this box set, in the context of uh, what it delivers, in the context of Shaw Brothers, um, in the grand scheme of things, I'm going to give Mighty Peking Man mm, three stars. I'll go with three stars. Three stars for this one. I was almost going to go four, but I think that's a little too much credit for this movie. It's a lot of fun. I had a great time with it, but it's... it's. It, I, honestly, I could see most people turning this off almost immediately. The, the Utam, the Mighty Peking Man, is barely in it. Uh, he really just, you know, shines in the last few uh, minutes of the movie, which is, uh, as you come to expect for a King Kong type movie... But the problem here is that it doesn't do anything different beyond the the King Kong shit. And uh, we've seen it. And we've seen it done way, way better. But this one, 
is a ton of fun and I really enjoyed it and I did enjoy the change of pace from this box set. Uh, so three stars for me. Let's briefly talk about the special features and then we'll switch over to the next film, which we're skipping this one is this one right here. Special features for Mighty Peking Man include a commentary track with Travis Crawford, silent Super 8 behind the scenes footage and that runs about 28 minutes. Then you get an interview with Keizo Murase, he's the suit designer. Uh, it runs about 20 minutes and this is a very fascinating interview for kaiju fans about the nuts and bolts of production. We get a 24 minute interview with director Ho Meng Hua and uh, he charts his whole career in that span of time. Finally we get an interview with Ku Feng, runs 7 minutes and he played the smarmy asshole who was seeking the Peking man for profit. Also for you completionists on here, the standard definition alternate version of the movie is included here. According to Arrow, they think it's a truer presentation of the film's look upon original release. I didn't watch the whole film again this way, I just uh, scanned through it. It doesn't look terrible, but it's suitably darker than the, uh, the restored version. I would just go with the restored version, to be honest. Speaking of alternate cuts, let's switch over to our second movie. There's two versions of Chinatown Kid on here. The uh, international version, which runs 115 minutes, and the alternate cut, which runs 90 minutes. Now, I have complained in the past about how long these movies are, but uh, I feel if I'm given the choice, I'll go with the longer version because I want to see as much story as possible. Give the movie the most, you know, benefit for the benefit of the doubt, more bang for the buck, whatever whatever phrasing you'd like to use i always tend to choose the longest one so my review is based on the international cut the 115 minute version of chinatown kit and i gotta say this i fucking love this movie it's really damn good and probably my favorite thing in this box set uh right next to the boxer from shang tongue but maybe there's a very good reason for that the Chinatown Kid reminds me of The Boxer from Shang Tung because they're almost exactly the same movie. Now, I'm not saying same script, but basically the same storyline. It also reminded me of a bleaker, darker rumble in the Bronx. But make no mistake, this is not a fun movie like a Jackie Chan movie. This is a pretty dark movie. Again, think more Boxer from Shang Tung. This is like a Hong Kong godfather, goodfellas type of thing. Alexander Fushen plays a young man who's been framed for a crime he didn't commit by a local gang and flees to San Francisco to hide out in Chinatown, only to have the same gang leader show up there and turn a local drug dealing boss against him. A rival gang decides to hire Fushen as one of their badass enforcers and uh, what starts out like a simple street toughs kung fu movie devolves in the last 20 minutes or so into a Scarface style drug dealer blood and guts show. This one took me by surprise. It seemed like a show off -y kung fu movie where a young dude was beating up bullies and gang members and then it slowly devolved into a crime drama. This is uh, really great stuff and the kind of writing I'm looking for in these movies. Overall, this is a really enjoyable film despite the appearance of extra characters that befriend Fu Shang and drag the movie down. That seems to be a problem with Shaw Brothers movies, by the way. There's too many damn characters and not enough screen time is devoted to what should be focused on. One extra character in here makes absolutely no sense and should have been cut immediately. This is a student who's also good at martial arts, but doesn't really factor into the plot at all, making him completely useless in the grand scheme of things and a character that should have been removed. But we spend so much time with this student guy that you think he's going to be a bigger deal than he is. And when he doesn't really add up to much, it's just so blatantly a waste of time and character development. But make no mistake, this is 100% Alexander Fu Sheng's movie, and he is a badass. He is a perfect balance between Jackie Chan and Bruce Lee, and he would have been just as big as they are if he hadn't have, have died young. He was in a car accident. It's unfortunate. Uh, he he passed away. I think he I think he made 30 films, and then uh, he had, uh, was tragically taken out of the world, out of the limelight. And honestly, I'd never even heard of him until this box set. Um, and and Disciples of Sheldon showed up from 88 Films. So he was uh, sort of a new discovery, but he's really good, and he's really good in this, and he's very likable, and he's really fun to watch, and his fights are genuine. They don't feel choreographed. The fights here are actually probably my favorites in the box set so far because they don't feel like obviously over-rehearsed, over-choreographed dance moves. The dude looks like he's really fucking fighting, like Bruce does, like Jackie does. He does a good job here, and um, he sells the action, he sells the drama, and when shit gets bleak towards the end, he sells that too. 
I think he did a good job here, and he's definitely the MVP of the movie, and I can't wait to watch more Fu Sheng movies. I know I've seen a couple already on this box set, but uh, here he really fucking shines um, and delivers a fantastic, fantastic experience. Something that, honestly, you might not be ready for, having gone through this box set. You'd be like, well, okay, let's just pop this in. This looks like a funny one. It was pretty fucking dark. I mean, I, I was pretty shocked with this one. Uh, but overall, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it enough. I'm going to give it four stars. That's right, four stars for the Chinatown Kid. Really, really fantastic stuff. Honestly, probably my favorite mm, thing on here so far. I, I, I really liked Boxer from Shang Tung. Um, I, I would say they're very similar, though. So I, I don't know which one I would put on top of the other, but uh, they can take turns on top uh, <laughs> for, for better or worse. Let's talk about the special features. Here you get a commentary track by Terrence J. Brady, which is very informative. Then you get an interview with Susan Shaw. It runs about 23 minutes. She's one of the leading ladies in the film. It's presented here kind of as a, a scene select commentary with her interview footage as a talking head playing in the corner uh, while a certain parts of the movie play out. Lastly, you get an amazing actor profile on Fu Shang. It runs about seven minutes. It charts his career, his marriage, and his untimely death in a car crash at the age of 29, and it's definitely a must-watch, especially if you enjoyed the film. There you go, baby doe. Disc 4, Peking Man, gets 3 stars, and Disc 6, The Chinatown Kid, gets 4 stars. I enjoyed this round very much. Stay tuned. Next episode, we're doing uh, Disc 5. Uh, we got a double feature there uh, that uh, features some more chop socky fun uh, I'm hoping for some solid plotting, but uh, I maybe I'm getting my hopes up there. Do you like this box set? Are you guys having fun with the box set? Let me know. I'm curious. Um, I'm um, I'm on the fence, to be honest. I, 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 and again, maybe I was getting my hopes up. I was thinking the plotting issue would 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 be a uh, you know an outlier, but it seems like it, it seems like they really do like to drag their asses in these movies, and I'm not a fan of that. But again, I'm coming at it from a different from a different angle. I make these movies, I write movies, so I'm very picky when it comes to character development, story progression, the third act structure, all that stuff. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very formulaic when it comes to that stuff. I, I, I want the story to be told because I don't want to waste people's time. Anyway, let's not waste any more of your time. Let's call it a day. Thank you so much. I appreciate you hanging out with me. I hope this video has found you well. If you're new here, do consider subscribing, my friend, because that means you and I get to hang out together. And oh, man, what an amazing thing that would be if we get to hang out and talk some more. I would love it. Comment down below. That's where the party continues. Two-way conversation here. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the movie. Leave me a thumbs up on your way out the door. Signing off for now.